Please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. I began worship today by saying that this is traditionally Reign of Christ Sunday. And so I wonder what comes to mind for you when you think about the term Reign of Christ. Does Jesus figure in there in some way? And if so, what does that mean for you? We often will say Jesus Christ as if Christ was Jesus' last name. In reality, Jesus, like his Jewish counterparts, didn't have a last name. Jesus was recorded in Mark's Gospel as Jesus, son of Mary, and was also known as Jesus of Nazareth because that is how individuals were identified in that culture. Christ, on the other hand, which means anointed one, was a title that was bestowed on Jesus by the early church. And so to be grammatically correct, we should actually say Jesus the Christ, meaning Jesus the anointed one. Why is this important? I think this is important because how we understand Christ in relationship to Jesus makes a huge difference in how we understand the reign of Christ in the world today, in our time. It seems to me that if our spiritual life is based on believing certain things about Jesus and believing certain things about God in ways that set Jesus and God apart from us, then the reign of Christ in the world might simply be confined to hoping for everyone everywhere to also believe the same things, which we know will never happen. If, though, our spiritual life is based on trying to live and act like Jesus within ourselves and in all our relationships in the world, then the reign of Christ is not just left to Jesus. The reign of Christ is not just left to Jesus, but becomes our way of living and being in the world. Our beliefs about Jesus and our beliefs about God become transformed into a lived experience of Jesus and moment by moment engagement with the God Spirit that is already deep, deep within us. Further, it is my sense that how we embrace the reign of Christ either as either removed from us or as part of our way of being plays a central role in how we respond to a a world in turmoil. In our book study conversation this past Wednesday evening, we talked at some length about our struggle to respond to the acts of terror perpetrated by different radical groups on ordinary people in France, Lebanon, and Kenya. We can, since Wednesday night, unfortunately, add Mali to that conversation and the lockdown in Brussels, and wherever similar death and injury will happen next, because it will happen next. We struggled together in how we find a compassionate and a loving way to respond when we are genuinely, genuinely fearful about the very difficult challenge of safety and security. I shared with the study group what I had shared with Ramin the day following the Paris attack. I was still on silent retreat when, when those events happened, and so it was the next morning as I'm driving home and I turned on the radio that I heard the horrific news. What I shared with Ramin that day was that my heart was broken with the news of what had happened. And my heartbreak deepened 
considerably when I heard the immediate anger and fear-filled response from France and the Western world calling for an even larger retaliatory, revenge-filled counter-attack. I immediately thought of Mahatma Gandhi saying, an eye for an eye only makes the whole world blind. Does more killing, does the taking of more human life become justified by the original killings? I found myself then, and the, and the study group certainly found ourselves Wednesday night, caught in a very difficult, difficult place. On one hand, we were asking, what would Jesus do? Would he respond to this perceived enemy, this other, with love? How many of us and others would have to die if we chose not to defend with violence? On the other hand, what might the future look like without a violent response? We have been down this road before. What might the world look like today if forces had not defended against Nazism 76 years ago? I find myself and many others I know find themselves caught wondering about the right path in the face of such indiscriminate violence. But one of the things that has come <coughs> much clearer to me through this is that finding a way forward requires decisions to be made, decisions to be made that ultimately have the best interests of all in mind, all people. If the goal is only to destroy a perceived enemy without consideration for the well-being of all our relations, then we will only set ourselves up for the next violent response from some other place in the world. If we are motivated only for revenge and defeat at any cost over another, I think we have lost the ability to be Christ in the world. Somehow, the effort to bring safety and peace at home must also include a willingness to bring peace and security to every other, especially our perceived enemies. This is the message in the story I told the children this morning. <clears throat> Aggressively defending our bread at the expense of the other diminishes the reign of Christ and the experience of God's kingdom on the earth. But a willingness to share our bread, whatever that may be, by reaching out to the other expands the reign of Christ and the experience of God's kingdom on earth. In his time, Jesus became Lord of all his relations through his willingness to act out of love rather than fear. And I think that Christ becomes witnessed in our world today through our willingness to act out of love rather than fear. John Philip Newell, in his book, The Rebirthing of God, says this, Perhaps the least preached upon text in the whole of Christian scripture is Jesus saying that those who follow him will not only continue his work, but do greater works than he. John 14, 12. Do we believe this? Newell goes on to say, the passion for oneness the passion for oneness is so deep in the matter of the universe that it will be reborn no matter what opposing forces are put in place and will multiply into greater and greater works of oneness for the healing of the earth. The well from which Jesus drew is living. It is deep within each one of us. May that 
living well of Christ within each of us find the courage, the true courage to love and become like Jesus, Lord of all our relations. Amen. Amen.